Prostitution has been part of the fabric of Amsterdam for centuries. But politicians want the city to have a reputation for art and architecture, not sex and drugs. And that might mean closing the windows of the world-famous red light district for good. They're pushing sex workers underground, basically. The brothels have already started to close, although many sex workers are not going to go without a fight. They are forced to relocate because when they close your working place, you don't have a choice. The thing that hurts the most is that the city claims it's for the best of the sex workers. So will the Netherlands' oldest profession survive? We went to Amsterdam to see if it's really lights out for the red light district. Moira works as a dominatrix at a club in Amsterdam. I do something that most people don't dare to talk about. She's been working in the sex industry for almost a decade and over the years she's seen it go through a transformation. I have seen a lot of places close. Red light district area in Amsterdam got a lot smaller. But there was a time when this was the most exclusive part of town. Amsterdam was once one of the most important trading ports in the world, a magnet for sailors and merchants. Back in the 17th century, vast wealth from the Dutch colonies flowed down these canals. De Wallen, which today is the city's most popular red light district, was at the centre of it all. There were a lot of uh, sailors coming in and the area was very known for being an entertainment area. It's no surprise that prostitution thrived. Through the centuries, the city tried to regulate and ban sex work. The tale goes that in the 18th century, brothel owners used red lanterns to discreetly advertise their services. Women would beckon customers from the windows because they weren't allowed to do so from the streets. In 1911, brothels were banned, although prostitution remained legal. By the 1960s, there were more than 3,000 women working in the windows. More and more arrived from abroad, many from Suriname and Thailand, to the point that local sex workers became a minority. But what attracted some repelled others. A lot of people didn't want to live in the area anymore, uh, and it got a really negative reputation. In the 80s, criminals and drug dealers roamed the streets. Illicit brothels were often controlled by gangs. Even paying customers began to stay away. There was less people visiting the area, so that was a difficult moment in time for sex workers. Hoping to bring order to the streets and greater protection for sex workers, the government lifted the ban on brothels in 2000. Zijn de bedoeling is ook om dus criminele aspecten van de prostitutie nu harder te kunnen uh, straffen. That year there were reportedly between 8 and 10,000 sex workers in Amsterdam. Around a third worked in the windows. Brothels needed a license to operate, and the idea was that sex workers would be self-employed taxpayers who wouldn't need to rely on brothel owners or gangs for their income. The red light district became as much of an attraction as Amsterdam's picture postcard canals, museums and coffee shops. By 2007, it was estimated that the windows were bringing in around 70 million euros, or nearly 100 million dollars. On a good day, sex workers could earn almost 400 euros, around 550 dollars. But the legalization of brothels didn't entirely clean up the industry, and sex workers continued to be stigmatized. Some banks wouldn't even let them open accounts or apply for loans. And in 2008, police found that almost 80 women had been trafficked by a group of Turkish men who ran a prostitution network. A survey at the time showed more than 60% of locals supported a revamp of the city center. People are coming to Amsterdam to have a party in my part of town, and I don't like that. One of the only ways to close down the brothels was for the city to become the landlord. Today we celebrate the fact that some of the first brothels are being used by some of the best Dutch fashion talents. More than a hundred brothels were closed, and the city soon owned more buildings in the red light district than all brothel owners combined. The city council have invested a lot of money to upgrade the area, to try to attract different type of entrepreneurs, more creative companies, also new residents. In 2015, more than 200 people marched through Amsterdam streets to protest the brothel closures. We want respect! 
and they want to clean up the area and close down uh, windows. So about 500 uh, window prostitutes will lose their working spaces only because of moral changes and real estate uh, interest. But the red light district continued to be one of the city's top attractions. A 2017 study found that around two and a half million tourists were visiting the area every year. That's double the number that visited the Anne Frank House. We want the experienced tourist who doesn't inflict his or her behavior on the city, but comes to the city because they're inquisitive about what life is about here and what our values are. In 2018, an estimated 6,000 people visited the red light district in a single hour on a busy weekend. The same year, auditors said officials had failed in trying to upgrade the area. That was when the city's first female mayor announced a plan to change the face of prostitution in Amsterdam for good. I want the women and men who do the work be proud of what they are doing and be respected for who they are. The most radical revamp included shuttering more windows and relocating sex workers to a so-called erotic center outside the city center. We would love to get rid of human rights violations and misbehavior. But the windows are where many of Amsterdam's sex workers feel the safest. There's always people here because it's a residential area. And if you were to work in some remote area that is deserted after six o'clock, I wouldn't feel very safe there. An erotic center kind of takes away the anonymity. Like, hi, everybody, I'm a whore. I'm going to work here. And, well, that is not really anonymous. <laughs> One survey of nearly 200 sex workers found that 90% didn't want to move. If they close the window, then um, all, all the sex workers will go underground. It's going to lead to a lot of more crime and hate against sex workers. But in March 2020, all brothels were closed as COVID-19 swept through the city and the Dutch government imposed a strict nationwide lockdown. Overnight, many of the 7,000 registered sex workers were left without their main source of income. They were allowed to go back to work in July 2020. This is Moira back then. She added a leather mask and black gloves to her collection as a COVID precaution. Op het moment dat er iemand in mijn halletje staat en die staat enorm te kuchen of te niezen, dan zeg ik liever kan je op een andere keer terugkomen, want dit dit. Hier heb ik ook geen uh, zin in, want dat betekent voor mij ook als ik een week uit de running lig, heb ik een week geen geld. As the city recovered, so did plans to relocate sex workers. Officials have proposed eight possible locations for the new erotic center, but sex workers still think the city center is where they belong. The red light district needs to have a bit of a rough edge. And many fear that soon the last of Amsterdam's red lights may flicker out, and that hundreds of years of the city's history will come to an end. Oh, it's sad to see a lot of these things disappear. It's history, it's culture, it's independence for women who want to work in this line of work, and I'm not sure if there's anything we can do to stop it. No names are spent, no my cards are dealt, there's another